Oh, hello. Good evening to all of you. As always, I'm a, a day ahead of you or a day behind, actually. It's, it's Monday today, tomorrow is Tuesday. So, and uh, the update on harvest, it's, uh, it's a challenge because uh, we did have a little more rain this past, uh, this past week, putting a bit more pressure on some of our vineyard. Right now, we're continuing to go through every single vineyard block and uh, fine tune what grapes are to be kept and what grapes are to be uh, discarded because they're not ripening all at the same speed. That is caused from some uh, excess water uh, in the past few weeks. So it's the time to really stay focused, try to sleep as much as we can, even though we cannot stay in bed, the grapes won't pick on the round. And so it, it is a challenge. It is a challenge. And many times I'm asked by people, say, what are the challenges of your work? And I say, there are two, two big challenges. And it's the weather and the people. Because uh, sometimes both are unpredictable. And we all know what I mean. I have to start the day of do a double checkup on myself and really figure out uh, first, uh, I have to ask myself a question. Do you want to have a good day or a bad day? And if I look just at adversities, I may be pushed toward looking at some uh, loomy future. Uh, instead, uh, I don't do that. I come up with a positive, uh, uh, charged, uh, charged positively and uh, to give you an idea, yesterday afternoon I went through this vineyard with Fernando Franco, our, our um, vineyard manager, and we made a plan. We had uh, this morning 16 people going through this block of uh, Merlot, which is very promising, yet it has a few clusters like you see here that are not ripening uh, as well, not at the right speed. So we went through, we did a cleanup. If we see some berries that are perhaps uh, compromised, some berries that, uh, that are being packed by birds. So we're going to be doing this for the whole uh, week or perhaps even more into next week. Fortunate that starting tomorrow, there's still a chance of a thunderstorm this afternoon. It may come, it may not. And starting tomorrow, we're going to start uh, looking at temperature in the 80s as a high, low 80s and mid 50s at night. So it's an ideal forecast for grapes to progress their ripening during the day. And at night, they go into a cooling uh, temperature, which is also good to keep any uh, diseases more at bay in case uh, in case uh, we have some dew, to give you an idea. Uh, if we are going into the 50s at night time, we're going to have some dew on the leaves and also on the clusters. And if we have uh, some berries that are slightly deteriorating, like I told you, and uh, we stay warm at night, they may continue to deteriorate. During the day with the heat, they are actually pushed to uh, dry up and therefore not be as much of a, of a negative impact on the wine. I may be getting a bit too technical with these things, but just to let you know what goes through my head and Fernando's head right now is constantly looking at the weather and figure out what are the best course of actions we can take. One thing I can guarantee you that we're not just going to leave all the crop is there including this cluster, just because uh, it would be a lot less expensive not to pay our staff to take rape on the ground, reduce the crop, reduce the yield. You heard this many times. I've, it's okay to hear it one more time. It's very meaningful to us that you understand and appreciate what goes into producing a bottle of wine. It's, uh, some years are very easy. Some years are more challenging. But by having a great staff here, 
we can make a big difference in those vintages that are more challenging. Going back, some people ask me, so what vintage this reminds you of? In some way, in a way of the type of um, uh, fruit we have, I go back to a, a vintage like 2004. It was challenging. We had to go several times through the vineyard to, to uh, readjust our crop load. Yet, as of today, we're drinking some wines from still from 2004. I, I mentioned uh, through a newsletter we, we sent out last week all about Cabernet Franc that we just start featuring some 2000 Cabernet Franc along with Cabernet Franc 2001 in our wine library. Two very, two vintages that are an antithesis. One was dry and hot, one was cooler, a bit more wet, an alternation of good weather, dry weather and some rains. So it does help me a lot to look back into what we we're able to do other vintages to to assess and understand what we need to do this harvest, this week and the next one are going to be very, very crucial, very, very important. So uh, again, uh, wake up in the morning, be positive, stay focused and don't give up. That's the mantra for, for the harvest. <laughs> and, uh, and the other thing, the next home uh, I build, I may not have a tin roof. I might just to, or put some different insulation because uh, at times uh, and well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in a full sleep two in the morning and the rain comes and, and hits the tin roof and uh, wakes me up. So um, I don't know if it's ever going to happen, but to the to younger winemakers, if you uh, choose which home to live in, Pick one with other tin roof so you don't have to hear the rain <laughs> and worry about your grapes. Anyway, so I want to go down at the cellar with you and taste, uh, have a taste of a couple of wines. One in particular, it's, uh, it is the Fiano uh, from 2022, which we harvested last Friday. And along with that, I have some, uh, some great news about, uh, about our Fiano. So I'll see you in the cellar. And voila, we're now in the cellar where we have over 20 different tanks in fermentation. The first to finish are the Pinot Grigio and the Sauvignon Blanc. We have many other white uh, grapes uh, fermenting. And this is, uh, I was mentioned earlier about the Fiano. The Fiano now, it's, uh, we picked it just last week on Saturday morning not fermenting yet there's no bubbles no carbonation yet we added yeast It'll take a little time as it warms up the yeast is going to start a very active fermentation I can tell moreover than the aroma the aftertaste that comes from tasting the juice the richness the depth that is there We've been close to a minute now. The flavor is still building up. So that's a great sign. That's how I, it's easier for myself to determine how great a wine, a, a juice is. It's more than the aromatics. It's this that aftertaste. The great news about Fiano is that the younger brother, actually the older brother, uh, the 2021, we sent to a tasting along with other Virginia wines to uh, a panel of taster in New York with jamesackling.com and we received quite a quite a few great uh, great results on quite a few wine we sent in but I'm only going to reveal you one for now through the week or next week we're going to tell you about some other wines but the Fiano received 93 points in the tasting and the description are really great and here it goes, an alluring nose of wet stone, lily, lemongrass, and fresh peach, medium body with silky texture, subtle but generous palate with lots of fresh fruit, and a cool character, lovely depth and complexity here. Drink now or hold. And that also reinforces when people say hold, it means it's a wine you can enjoy in a few years. That's the same 
perception that we had years ago on a well, our Vermentino and our Viognier that can age. Fiano is in the same group. This is what gave birth to Nascent, of course, our flagship uh, white wine. But I am so happy to see also another thing that we fo start focusing a bit more than 10 years ago on white varieties grown in fairly warm to hot climates in Italy, Fiano, Vermentino, and Palangina. And here is the answer. We are confirmed that it is a grape, not just for Virginia, but in particular for our vineyard, which within the part of Virginia is one of the regions a bit warmer th than others. So, great news. Uh, this uh, score. Bad news is that we don't have it for sale yet. We're still selling in 2020, which also is a, is a great uh, vintage. So be patient, but you're going to see our Fiano 2021 in the future in some, uh, during some wine dinner or ad release. We will let you know. I'll see you next week and uh, with some more updates on harvest. That's all you're going to hear for the next few weeks. Uh, thank you so much for watching for watching. <laughs> Goodbye.